Hello and welcome to Ethics in the News. My name is Hannah Storm and I'm the Director of the Ethical Journalism Network. In this edition, I've been speaking with Will Vassilopoulos. He's a video journalist for Agence France Press and based in Athens. In 2015, Will was one of the first journalists to travel to Lesbos to cover the refugee crisis there. And I began by asking him to reflect on how covering the refugee crisis changed him and his ways of working. It has changed me. It has changed me a lot in my work. Uh, I definitely see things differently now than five years ago. How would you say you learned to cover and cope with the experiences you had? Bearing in mind, we know that the experiences had by the refugees and migrants are very traumatic in many instances. They are very traumatic, for sure they're very traumatic. The way I've, I learned to, to cope with it is to differentiate what's work and what's uh, home. That has not always been easy, but it's, it's, a, it's a key factor in, uh, in coping with this, that uh, you have to be professional and you have to know when you're dealing with these sort of uh, issues to, to keep it at work. And then clearly when uh, you go home to to try to decompress. Home is another another obstacle in a way you have to you have to overcome because it's uh, all these uh, sights and images you've been uh, recording uh, you know you do carry them home and uh, it's it's not easy it's not easy. You've been there 30 times now does it get any easier or does it in some ways get even harder? In some instances it does get easier because you do grow a thicker skin that is for sure. But there are times where you just relapse to, to whatever thoughts you had even from five years ago. There's been a, an influx again of uh, migrants the past a few months uh, in all the Greek islands. Just recently, about maybe a month ago, I was, uh, I was filming um, an arrival of a dinky boat in horrible weather conditions and with some 70, 75 uh, refugees and migrants on board. And I was thinking to myself, oh my God, this is like 2015. And the same feelings that I was still feeling five years ago, I got them in 2020, which shows that no matter all the experience in the world someone can have in dealing with such social stories, these images, they will haunt you. You can't just easily forget at them. You can't just easily go about doing your job and not be affected. I'm not that certain that experience is, is a key factor. It's definitely a factor in that I have a thicker skin, that I know how to cover, how to protect myself and when to look away. There are times where you just have to concentrate on your job and look away because you know that these images, it is going to haunt you. I recall you saying to me back in 2015 that you were one of the very first people as journalists to witness the arrival of refugees and migrants on the island and it became a difficult situation because effectively the role of the journalist versus the rescuer became blurred when there was no other help on hand. How as a kind of first responder effectively did that impact you at the time? We did feel like first responders because there were very very few media but besides that it was very few media is that there were almost zero authorities just of some very, very few NGO members and us. It was overwhelming because uh, the flows started uh, spiking uh, pretty fast, way before authorities or, or NGOs really could handle this. So there were many times where the line was blurred because there was sometimes we had to take some choices while we were filming, while we were taking photos or on, on when to help uh, in such a dire situation, when to leave the camera down, when to give a helping hand to these people. It was blurry in the beginning, but as time progressed, you know, this thing became more clear and uh, it's a matter of doing my job, but its instinct is on top of everything. So if I felt that I had to put out a helping hand, that's what I would follow. These are human beings you're dealing with, isn't it? And you're a human being. You've spoken to me in the past about some of the relationships you developed over time with certain individuals. Looking back on that now, what do you make of, of, of that situation? Certainly, I've met some, some fantastic people these past five years, some which have shown 
immense strength, psychological and physical. And all a lot of these people, uh, I mean, I still contact, I still keep in touch with uh, with many people. I don't know if it, if it was good or bad. Uh, at, at the moment, at that time, it always felt good. I always wanted to build a rapport with the people I was uh, interviewing. Fundamentally, journalism is about building relationships. It's about humanity. And this is a story that was about large, large numbers of people, but you put a human face to those numbers. Was there any specific way that you managed to build those relationships without those relationships becoming more than what journalism is perhaps about? It's not black or white. There's a lot of gray area because obviously, depending on the situation you're at, uh, psychologically, emotionally, uh, you you tend to to act differently in some in some cases. Uh, for sure, in uh, in uh, in Domeni, which is the, uh, a camp in the northern borders uh, of Greece, uh, where we had a lot of time to spend with migrants. On the, my relation with uh, many of these were different because they I would see them every single day for two weeks at a time when I would be up there, and you build this relationship and you want to help somehow. Back in 2015, we started some work on a project that ended up connecting something called moral injury to the work that media did. So the sense of kind of shame and guilt that a lot of journalists felt. You talked to us extensively about that. How has that kind of understanding of what moral injury is helped newsrooms better support their journalists? I think it has helped uh, immensely. Moral injury is something that uh, I had never heard of. Uh, we had all heard of uh, PTSD, but nobody had ever heard of uh, moral injury. So it was something new. Understanding what I was going through, uh, through, through the work of uh, this research, uh, is something that uh, helped me immensely uh, understand and Every time I would take a trip to an island or be at a, at a camp, even on mainland, it put it put sense into some of my emotions. I understood why I would feel I would feel this shame. Why would I feel this anger? Why I would act this way? And by knowing, understanding that there's a scientific reason for all of this, it's something that helped me cope. I think it underlined as well for me the really important sense that journalism is really, really important at times like this. Journalism gives a sense of accountability and transparency and shows the human side of the story. And I think that for me, it was that sense of us understanding that our mission, I suppose, as journalists is really important too. And I think when you can hold on to that that helps balance out some of the, the feelings potentially as well. What do you think about that? Yes, definitely. And that's why through my work uh, and the way I, I would f film, it was, uh, was rarely about uh, the numbers. It was, uh, you know, of course, I have to show the situation it is, but I was always more interested in uh, more specific stories. You know, I, want, I always want to put a human face to the story. So... This is why I would be very, very careful at uh, speaking to people and how I would speak to them and building a report and trust. These are the stories that I want to tell the world, not just the numbers. When we were doing the work into moral injury, we understood that the people who were perhaps more likely to experience moral injury were freelancers, local journalists, and they were parents. Do you think any of those specifically applied to you? For sure, being a parent applied to me. For sure, uh, being a local applied to me. A lot of these islands, uh, they're the most idyllic places in this corner of the world. You just don't expect to see horrific images and uh, and suffering in, in such a setting. It's obvious, you know, if you have small, young children, you, when you see a similar, a child of similar age, you, you can't but not think of your own children and how how good they have it in comparison. So you do feel guilty, you know, you do feel guilty, especially if you can't, if you can't do much. There's only so much, you know, you can help. And that's, again, blurring journalism. You know, you can't become the story, obviously. You have to, you have a mission. You have to go and report the story. 
and it's not always easy. There, you have to find a fair balance, you know. How did being a freelancer, because you were a freelancer for a long time, how did that impact on your the way you were able to do your job and, and the kind of response that you had? Being a freelancer is, uh, is not easy. I was a freelancer, but I had full support from AFP, so... I was not like many other colleagues, freelancers, which they would go out there to to try to get the story so they can sell to someone. I was lucky enough to to have AFP taking care of me. But having said that, being a freelancer, you always, always, you can't leave a job. You have to take it. You know, that's, uh, you know, the instinct of a freelancer. So there were times where... Obviously, I would, under normal circumstances, I should have rested or not take an assignment. But your freelance instinct says, no, you're going to, you know, if there's work out there, you're going to be doing it. So I ended up spending a lot of 2015 and 2016 out at camps. If I was a staff member, I'm not sure if I would have protected myself differently. If I would have said, okay, I need time off. Why is it that people aren't covering the refugee crisis and following it as a story so much anymore? The people are not following the the refugee migration crisis anymore because uh, there's uh, they're they're tired. I really believe uh, people are tired of watching these uh, images. It is still extremely important to show this story because it is happening. It is continuing to happen. So we definitely need to be there to report this. Human suffering is knocking on Europe's door every day on the island of Lesbos. You can't look away. We have to report it. And what do you think it'll take to bring this story back into the headlines? It would only get important again when uh, something big happens, so when there's a, a huge fire or, or there's something very tragic happens. That's the unfortunate, that we only cover now the migration refugee crisis when a tragedy occurs. Uh, I mean, I understand that we can't cover it extensively like it was in uh, 2015, 2016, but there's just very few media outlets now covering it. I'm sure they find it important, but perhaps clients, viewers don't, uh, don't care about the story anymore. If it's possible to end on more of a positive note, from the work that I've done with you and the work that I've done with your organisation AFP and other media organisations out there, it's become quite clear that people are much more aware in the last few years about their duty of care to journalists from a mental health perspective and the kind of ethics that are involved in that. Do you see positive changes in that regard? And, and if so, what are the kind of positive things you see coming from such a difficult and traumatic reporting experience? Well, the positive outcomes is that we, we, ha we have the know-how now. We know what to expect. So we can, uh, uh, as journalists, guard ourselves. We can't, obviously, 100% guard ourselves, but knowledge is it's the best ammunition we have. To give you a quick example, I was uh, last month uh, at the gym, and out of the blue, I was speaking to a, to a fellow. We came up to the conversation what I was doing, and he was explaining to me how interested he is about the psychology of, of journalists. And I explained to him, oh, you know what, you know, there's this uh, term called uh, moral injury. And he tells me, I know what moral injury, I've been reading about this. A few years ago, nobody would uh, would have uh, regarded us, you know, or about our our mental health. You know, it's so, uh, there, there, there is definitely an improvement. There is obviously still a stigma. There is obviously still some degree of taboo. You know, often people don't feel comfortable in talking about their mental health, but I think it's so important that, you know, people like you and people who go through traumatic experiences are able to talk about it. Is there anything finally you want to add? Journalists especially need to find an outlet to speak about their issues, about their you know, emotional issues, what they're going through their, through their job. It is very important, you know, whether it's to speak to a professional, whether it's to write things down in a blog to your editors. It will help you in the long run. And that was Will Vasilopoulos from Agence France Press speaking with me there. Goodbye.